praise. Praise God, hallelujah. At isa na naman pong uh, magandang araw at panahon na ibinigay sa atin ng Panginoon upang ipagpatuloy ang pagpuri at pagsamba sa Kanyang pangalan. At bago po tayong magsimula sa ating gawain, tayo po munang lahat ay manalangin sa ating Panginoon. Tayo pong lahat ay yumuko at pumikit at tayo po ay manalangin sa Diyos. Panginoon, marami pong salamat muli sa magandang araw na ito na iyong kaloob sa aming mga buhay. Salamat Panginoon sa isa na namang privilehiyo na makapagpuri at pasalamat sa iyong dakilang pangalan. Salamat din muli Panginoon sa salita mong ibababa sa aming mga buhay sa oras at sa araw na ito. Salamat sapagkat panibagong kaalaman Panginoon, panibagong kalakasan, panibagong pagpapala at himala ang mararanasan namin, Panginoon, sa pamamagitan ng iyong lingkod na gagamitin sa aming harapan. Kaya naman, Lord, sa oras na ito, muli namin ibinubukas ang aming puso, ibinubukas ang aming buhay, Panginoon, sa anuman nang gagawin mo, Panginoon, sa oras at sa araw na ito. Kaya naman, Lord, sa umpisa pa lamang po ng aming gawain, tunay nga, O Diyos, na sinasamahan mo kami at sasamahan mo kami ng patuloy hanggang sa pagtatapos ng aming gawain na ito. At maging sa mga susunod pa naming Gawain, Panginoon, Ikaw, Lord, ang mapapurihan at madakila sa pagkatunay nga, O Diyos, na makikita namin ang patuloy mong kabutihan sa aming mga buhay. Kaya, Lord, sa oras na ito, ibinabalik na po namin sa iyo ang lahat ng kapurihan. Pasasalamat at pagdakila sa natatanging pangalan ng aming Panginoong Jesus. Amen at Amen. At patuloy po tayong sumamba sa Panginoon at patuloy po nating itaas ang kanyang dakilang pangalan sa oras at sa araw. Hallelujah, for you have won the victor's crown, Lord.
exalted Lord.
I choose to do. That is what I decide to do. To lift your name on high. Despite all that we are going through. Despite all that this nation is subjected to. Despite all that I am feeling in my heart. The pain, the sorrow, the difficulty, the troubles, the struggles that I go through. I choose to lift your name, Lord. I choose to lift your name on high. Sapagkat, Panginoon, ginawa mo sa krus ng Kalbaryo, namatay ka para sa akin, para sa mundo, upang ang katagumpayan ay aming maranasan. Salamat po, O Diyos. Patuloy ka namin pupurihin, luluwalhatiin, paparangalan, at itataas sa aming mga buhay, sa aming mga pamilya, sa aming bayan. Sa inyo po ang lahat ng kadakilaan, pagpupuri at pagsamba sa natatanging pangalan ni Jesus. At ang lahat po ay magsabi ng Amen. Amen. Praise God. So, hallelujah. Napaka powerful po at meaningful po ng ating kinanta. Sabi doon, I left your name on high because you came from heaven to earth to show the way from the earth to the cross from the cross to the grave but now from the grave to the sky amen that summarizes all the journey of our lord jesus christ in this holy week amen wak taon-taon po nating sinecelebrate ang uh, dakilang mga araw na ito ng uh, mahal na araw ang sinasabi po natin but this celebration this commemoration is nothing unless we find the true meaning of it in our lives unless we live it in our lives. Malibang ito po ay ating uh, lakaran sa ating mga buhay. Realizing that one, at one point in our lives, somebody died for us. Somebody took the sins that we, that we have done in our lives. Somebody bore it all so that we can be forgiven, so that we can be set free, so that we can be redeemed. And it was the Lord Jesus Christ who accomplished that, who executed the greatest plan of the Father, and that is the plan of redemption and salvation for humanity. Uh, praise God because we have been blessed and privileged that salvation has come into our lives. At uh, ang kaligtasan po yun na tinanggap natin sa Panginoon ay napaka-espesyal. Amen? It should be treasured and it should be... Uh, you know, nurtured in our hearts and in our lives. And uh, in the past few days, we have gone through the journey that the Lord Jesus Christ have uh, done in His life so that, as I said, we can experience the salvation of God, the blessing of God, the redemption of God. So yesterday was... They call it the Holy Thir Saturday or Holy Black Saturday. And we have seen that it was a period of silence. It was a period of intermission. It was a period of uncertainty. It was a period of confusion. Maybe the followers of Jesus Christ don't know what to do because their master is gone. He is laid on the tomb. Patay na ang kanilang Panginoon. Patay na ang kanilang master. Patay na ang kanilang rabay. And the question is, what's next? Ano na ang magaganap? Ano na ang mangyayari? Ano na ang gagawin natin? At magkamit sa buhay po natin, nararanasan din po natin ang mga ganong uh, pagkakataon na kung saan everything just comes to a halt. Everything just comes to a stop. Lahat ay uh, napaparalyze. Parang uh, everything is on a standstill in our lives. Everything is dead, you know. We, there is a death to our job, death to our businesses, death to our relationship, death to our marriages, death to our finances. Everything just comes to a stop and dead. Pero sa araw pong ito, hallelujah, atin pong uh, pag-aaralan na pagkatapos po ng kamatayan ay merong pagpapanibagong buhay. There is resurrection. And today is celebrated in the whole world as the great Easter Sunday. I don't know where that came from, where the Easter Sunday 
came from because there is no such thing as Easter Sunday in the Bible, nor bunnies, nor egg hunting, sapagkat ito po yung common worldly celebration of Easter Sunday. May egg hunting, meron pong uh, bunnies, and uh, all of these things. But, wow, these are all worldly celebrations that has nothing to do with the true meaning of Christ's resurrection. So today, wow, this is a very, very heavy topic, and I pray that God will, you know, uh, anoint me and just give this uh, truth to us sapagkat ang resurrection po ng Panginoong Jesus ay ang pinaka-basic foundation ng Kristyanismo. It is the basic foundation of Christianity. If there is no resurrection, then everything that we have believed in, everything that we have, you know, anchored our faith in, everything that we have taught and preached, everything is a lie. Lahat pong yun ay kasinungalingan at lahat pong yun ay walang kabuluhan sapagkat kapag hindi po bumangon si Yesus sa mga patay, ibig sabihin mali po yung ating pinanampalatayanan. Mali po yung ating uh, pananampalataya, mali po yung ating faith, mali po yung ating Christianity na sinusundan, mali po yung Diyos na ating sinasamba, mali po yung Kristo na ating pinaniniwalaan. Kung hindi po nabuhay, si Kristo mula sa mga patay. So in other words, the resurrection of Christ is the core of our Christian faith. We celebrate it in order to declare our victory that indeed we have put our faith in a true God. We have put our faith in a true Christ, and that is, that is the Lord Jesus Christ. If God raised Jesus from the dead, then nothing else really matters, and no one can argue against Christianity. Because honestly, this is the thing that the enemies of Christ have always attacked. Ito po yung kanilang uh, pinipilosopo at uh, minamak na hindi naman daw totoong nabuhay si Kristo mula sa mga patay. Pero makikita po natin na marami pong mga verses sa Bible na kung saan marami pong witnesses to the resurrection of Christ and we are going to tackle that later on. So, sometimes, honestly speaking, we Christians maybe come to a point of doubt and unbelief. Dumarating sa punto po na tayo po ay uh, nawawalan po ng pananampalataya. We doubt our faith. We doubt our belief. We doubt the things that we have believed in. But when those things and those moments come into our life, when we doubt our faith, it will help if we go back and revisit the resurrection of Christ, the empty tomb. And that is what we are going to study today. Jesus Christ and the empty tomb. Yesterday, we studied Jesus Christ and the tomb. And today, we will study the fact that Jesus Christ has an empty tomb because he has resurrected from the dead. And this is a very reliable historical account. It is recorded in the Bible. There were many witnesses who were able to see and witness the resurrection of Christ. So, this account of the resurrections are recorded in the book of Matthew 28, 1-13. That is where we have taken our account of the journey of the Lord Jesus Christ to the cross and now the resurrection. It is also recorded in Mark 16, chapter 1 to 14, Luke 24, 1 to 49, and John chapter 20, 1 to 23. But for now, I choose to take the account from the book of Matthew. And please follow me in Matthew 28, verses 1 to 13. After the Sabbath, at dawn on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. 
there was a violent earthquake. For an angel of the Lord came down from heaven and going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothes were white as snow. The guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. And the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here. He has risen, just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay, and then go quickly and tell his disciples, He has risen from the dead. And he is going ahead of you into Galilee, and there you will see him. Now I have told you. So the women hurried away from the tomb, afraid yet filled with joy, and ran to all the disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them. Greetings, he said. And they came to him, clasped his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers, Go to Galilee, because there they will see me. While the women were on their way, some of the guards went into the city, and they reported to the chief priest everything that happened. When the chief priests has met the elders, they devised a plan. They gave the soldiers a large sum of money. In other versions of the Bible, they gave the soldiers a bribe, telling them, you should say his disciples came during the night and they stole him away while we were asleep. Amen? Kung makikita po natin yung narrative, napakalinaw, ano? Ang sabi po doon, after the Sabbath, which is after the Black Saturday, on the first day of the week, Mary and Mary Magdalene and all the other Marys were sitting in front, as we have learned yesterday. They did not leave the Lord Jesus Christ even to His death. So we can see there the faithfulness, the, yo the loyalty, and the love that is so great in the hearts of these women that at the point of death, they did not leave the Lord. And because of that faithfulness, because of that loyalty, because of that great love for the Lord, they were rewarded. They were the first witnesses to the resurrection of Christ. Sila po yung unang naging nakakita ng pagkabuhay ni Jesus mula sa mga patay. And what are the circumstances surrounding the resurrection? It said there was a violent earthquake. Amen? God shook the earth and it was not an ordinary earthquake. But it was such a violent earthquake. And then the angel of the Lord came down from heaven and he went to the tomb and rolled back the stone and sat on it. Amen? So meron pong anghel na nagbukas ng tomb. Pero alam niyo po ba sa Mark 16, mas detailed po yung uh, pagkakakwento ni Mark. As I told you, the synoptic gospels give a different perspective for all the accounts that happened in the Lord Jesus Christ. Kaya maganda po pag pinag-aaralan natin ito, babasahin po natin lahat sa account ni Matthew, sa account ni Mark, sa account ni Luke. Sa tatlong synoptic gospels na ito, makikita po natin na halos pare-pareho lang. Sa book of John lang po medyo na iba yung presentation kasi iba po ang pagkaka-present ni John kay uh, Jesus dito, yung kanyang pagka-Diyos, yung, yung, yung deity ng Panginoong Yesus. Pero tingnan po natin sa Mark 16, 3 to 7. The women said to each other, Who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? But as they arrived, they looked up and saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled aside. So, makikita po natin na itong mga babaeng ito, sabi ko nga, they were loyal and faithful and they loved the Lord so much that the task was given to them to take care of the body. Just like Joseph of Arimathea and Nicodemus. Joseph of Arimathea and Nicodemus, they prepared, they, they were in charge of the tomb, si Joseph, and 
Nicodemus was in charge of buying the herbs and spices. But I believe it was the job of the women to apply. Amen? I, kanila pong pinupuntahan yung ano sapagkat gusto po nilang i-anoint yung body ng Panginoon. Putting on those precious herbs and spices. Imagine, put yourself in the heart and life of these women. Nakita po nila si Jesus kung paano itong pinahirapan sa cross and they brought him down from the cross at si Jesus po ay punong-puno ng sugat mula ulo hanggang katawan at punong-puno ng dugo. He was covered with blood because of the suffering and pain that he suffered on the cross. And it was given to this woman, women the task to clean the body. To anoint the body. To put the herbs and spices on every wound. Imagine, you know, somebody you love na binugbog, inalimura, at puro sugat-sugat ang katawan, at puro dugo ang katawan, at ikaw ang nakatokang maglinis nito. These women did that. And when they were about to go, there was a big problem. It is time to anoint the body of the Lord, but there is a big rock, there is a big stone covering it. The tomb had a big stone in it. And so they said to each other, who will roll away the stone? See, no, we are women. You know, physically, we cannot do that. It's a big stone. We cannot do that. We cannot do that. But when these women arrive at the tomb, they were surprised. Bakit po? Sapagkat bukas na po ang libingan. Bukas na po ang tomb. Hallelujah. Sometimes we think so much. We overthink in fact. Sa sobra po nating pag-aalala, ay uh, lagi po natin sinasabing, sino magbubukas? Mabigat yon, Amen? Punong-puno po tayo ng pag-aalala, punong-puno po tayo ng pamumroblema, sino ang magbubukas ng libingan? Who will roll away the tomb? Brethren, do not worry about it. It's not your job. Hindi mo trabaho na buksan ang libingan sapagkat alam na ng Diyos iyon. Pagdating po ng mga babae, ano pong nakita nila? Bukas na ang libingan. The stone was rolled away. And it is the same way that the Lord is rolling away the stones in our lives. Amen? The doors of opportunities, the doors of possibilities might have been closed in our lives for now. But do not worry. Because just like the women, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary, they were thinking, they were having problems, they were having anxiety. Who will roll away the stone? There's no men here. Wala na yung mga alagad. Iniwanan tayo. Sinong lalaki ang magbubukas ng mga ito? Pero alam na po ng Diyos yun. Kaya naman ang Panginoon ay ano, sa book of Matthew, ang account doon, nagpadala ang Panginoon ng anghel. At ang anghel po ang nagbukas. God can send angels to open the doors for you. God can send angels to protect you. God can send angels to roll away the stone for you. Hallelujah. And if there is a big stone in your life right now that is giving you a burden, that is giving you a struggle, a pain, and difficulty, do not worry about it. Do not carry it. Not by your own might, not by your own strength. Even if, kahit na siguro, lima pa silang mga babaeng magtulak ng stone nito, they will never be able to move this stone because this stone was so great. Amen? And the Lord knew that. Alam ng Panginoon nyo na hindi ka kayanin ng mga babaeng ito sapagkat sila ay physically weak and they could never move that stone. But God knew it. And so He sent the angels to move it. He sent the angels to roll away the stone for these women. Likewise, the Lord is doing it for you right now. The Lord is rolling away the stone in your life. The Lord is rolling away the stone of difficulty, of problem, of anxiety in your life. You just have to trust in the Lord. Amen? Bakit po na-roll yung stone? Why was the, ro- was, why was the stone rolled away? Why and for whom was it rolled away? 
Was it for Jesus? So that He can get out of the tomb? Para ba kay Lord yun? Para ma-fulfill yung resurrection? At bumangon siya mula sa mga patay? Hindi po para kay Jesus ang pag-roll away ng stone. Sapagkat pagbukas po ng, ng stone na yon, wala na si Jesus sa loob. Jesus do not need our help. Jesus do not need. Jesus doesn't need the help of this angel. The rolling of the stone was not for Jesus to come out of the tomb. Because when the stone was rolled, Jesus was not there. The, the stone was empty. The tomb was empty. Ito po ay uh, wala nang laman. Wala na pong laman yung tomb na iyon. And so when they entered the tomb, they saw that it was empty. Amen? So for whom was the stone rolled away? It was not for Jesus because the Son of God doesn't need anyone to do that for Him. The Son of God doesn't need the help of anyone to do that for Him. And why was the stone rolled? It was for the women. It was for Mary Magdalene and the women. It was for you. It was for me. The Lord is rolling down the stone by the angel that He has said so that we will see what is behind it para makita natin kung ano yung nasa loob nun. At ang nasa loob nun ay ano? Isang bakanteng libingan. It was an empty tomb. Why? Because Jesus rose from the dead. At this point in time, the stone was rolled away for the women to see that yes, indeed, the prophecy was fulfilled. Because Jesus foretold His death and His resurrection. Ang sabi niya, you will destroy this temple, but on the third day, I will rebuild it. Amen? Yun po yung mga pronouncement ng Panginoon. At alam po ng mga kaaway niya yan. Alam po ng mga chief priests iyon. Pero ano pong ginawa ng Panginoon? Di, hindi ba niya tinupad yung mga pronouncement niya about His uh, death and resurrection? He fulfilled it. That's why we can trust the Lord Jesus. He is a trustworthy God. Pag pwede mo siyang pagtiwalaan kasi yung sinabi niya, ginawa niya. Amen? Yung kanyang pangako ay ginawa niya. Kaya yun po ang dahilan kung bakit napakahalaga ng resurrection. Sapagkat pinapatunayan nito na ang Panginoon natin ay Diyos na makapangyarihan. Who died and rose from the dead? Come on. In our history, sino sa palagay nyo ang nakagawa nito? Sino ang namatay at pagkatapos ng ikatlong araw ay nabuhay mula sa mga patay? Come on, give me a name. Sa ating kasaysayan, sino ang namatay at pagkatapos ng tatlong araw, siya ay nabuhay. At hindi na namatay na maguli sapagkat it was recorded that He ascended bodily into the heavens. Siya po ay umakyat. Amen? Sa Book of Acts, siya po ay na-record na umakyat. Ascension po ang tawag doon. And so, that, you know, proves the fact that our Lord is a trustworthy Lord. Our Lord is a trustworthy God because he's, He fulfills what He says. Ginagawa po niya yung kanyang pangako. Amen? Sa, sa buhay po natin, marahil meron pong mga, ta- mga pangako tayo na pinangahawangan. The Lord has given us promises. And uh, sometimes we lose our faith in those promises. Sometimes we cannot believe those promises because what is happening in our lives is completely the opposite of those promises. But wag po tayong mawawalan ng tiwala at pananampalataya sapagkat totoo po ang mga pangako ng Diyos. Tinupad po ng Panginoon ang kanyang pangako that I will rise again from the dead. And so, at this point in time, the tomb was empty. Amen? And may you see the truth sa buhay mo ngayon. Ang Panginoon ay handang alisin ang bato na humahad lang sa ating pananampalataya. The Lord rolled away the stone for the women to see 
that behind the stone is an empty tomb, which is a proof that the Lord has risen from the dead, which is a proof that Jesus Christ is alive. The empty tomb is a testimony that Jesus is alive. Amen? And the attackers of this resurrection doctrine have always said that it was hindi po nangyari to hindi po totoong nangyari yun kasi maaring ninakaw yung katawan ng Panginoon kaya wala na siya doon pero hindi po totoo yun sapagkat kung titingnan po natin sa Matthew 28.11 while the women were on their way some of the guards went into the city and they reported to the chief priest everything that had happened and when the chief priest had met with the elders they devised a plan and they gave the soldiers a large sum of money bribe, suhol sabi nila say that the disciples came during the night and stole him away while we were asleep yun po ang panukala ng mga kalaban ng Panginoon yun po ang panukala ng mga chief priest sabihin nyo ninakaw yung bangkay niya kaya wala dyan sinuhulan po nila yung mga guard kasi po yung mga guard na shock din eh yung ginagwardyahan nila wala na Amen. The, the stone was rolled away and, and the angels came and sa Matthew 28 verse 4 the guards were so afraid. Amen. Natakot po yung mga guards kasi hindi lamang po nila nakita ang isang appearance of a lightning and, uh, and an image of a person with white clothes, white as snow. There was also a violent earthquake. Amen. Ito po yung mga events or circumstances surrounding the resurrection of the Lord. It was a supernatural thing. Amen? And so the guards, human as they are, were afraid. They were shocked. And so they run to the chief priest and said, there is no more. There is no more. Wala na, wala na yung nilagay natin at nilibing. The, the tomb is empty. At ano pong sabi ng mga chief priest? Ito ang malaking pera. Huwag niyo sabihin yung totoo. Sabihin niyo, ninakaw ng mga alagad. Kaya wala nang laman ang libingan. Tell them that the disciples have stolen the body while you were sleeping. But that is not the truth. That is a lie from the pit of hell. The attackers of the resurrection, the critics of the resurrection will try everything and anything that will destroy the fact of the resurrection, the truth of the resurrection. But they can never dis- discredit the fact. They, they can never discredit the truth that Jesus has an empty tomb because He rose from the dead and He is alive. He is alive forevermore. Amen? Kaya po, ang Panginoon tinupad niya yung kanyang pangako, pero yung mga chief priests, hindi pa rin po naniwala. Yung mga chief priests, lahat ay gagawin pa rin. Amen? Para pagtakpan ng katotohanan. Sinuhulan po nila ng malaking perang mga gwardiya para magsalita at manahimik. At huwag isiwalat ang katotohanan. Pero ang katotohanan, takpan mo man. Ang katotohanan, tabunan mo man. Ang katotohanan, suhulan mo man ng malaking pera ay hindi mo may tatago. Sapagkat kitang-kitang ebidensya, wala nang laman ang libingan. The tomb is empty. Jesus Christ rose from the dead and He is alive. And no critics, no dis- detractors, no enemies of the gospel can hide that because there were women who witnessed the resurrection. There were guards who witnessed the empty tomb. Amen? And so, if you are doubting your faith, if you are in a situation where, you are, where your faith is failing you, Go back to the resurrection. Go back to the empty tomb and believe that Jesus Christ is powerful, that He rose from the dead. And that when He is able to rise from the dead, bring Himself to life, how much more can He not do the impossible for you? Rising from the dead is the most impossible thing in the world. Amen. Mabuhay ka mula sa mga patay. Yan ang pinaka-imposibleng pwedeng mangyari. Pero yung mga pinaka-imposible ay nagawa ng Panginoon. Nang ibig sabihin, yung imposible sa buhay mo ay kaya rin gawin ng Panginoon. The most unbelievable, 
the most impossible thing in your life can become believable, can become possible because Jesus Christ had done it. He rose from the dead. The most impossible thing that could happen, but he was supernaturally able to demonstrate that he rose from the dead. Marami pong tao nagtayo ng religion. Many people establish their religions. All of their founders, all of their religious founders have died at one point in our history and they have never come out of the grave and rise again just like the Jesus Christ of Christianity did. Amen? Ang Jesus ng Kristyanismo lang ang nakagawa nito. Confucius, Buddha, the God of all these kinds of religions, they all died at one point in their lives. And until now, they are dead. They have never come back to life. Only Jesus of Christianity has resurrected from the dead. Proof to the fact that He is God. Because only God can do that. Rise from the dead. Amen? So, when the angel rolled away the stone, it was not for Jesus. Because Jesus does not help does not need the help of angel to come out of the grave, to come out of that tomb. The rolling away of the stone was for the women, for them to be able to see the evidence, the fact, the truth that the tomb is already empty and that Jesus has risen, or risen from the dead. Amen? So when the women, so Mark 16, ituloy po natin, when they entered the tomb, they saw a young man clothed in a white robe sitting on the right side. And the women were shocked. But the angel said, do not be afraid. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth who was crucified. He is not here. He is risen from the dead. Ito po ay napaka literal na proklamasyon na siya po ay nabuhay mula sa mga patay. Ang sabi po ng anghel. Because the women were shocked and they were scared. It, as if they have seen a ghost. Maaring, sabi nila, ano ba ito? Multo ba ito? Pero ang anghel po ay nagsalita. Ang sabi niya, huwag kayong matakot. Si Jesus, na nas, ng Nazareno, ng Nazaret, na hinahanap nyo, na ipinako nila, ay nabuhay mula sa mga patay. Look, this is where they laid his body. And now it is empty. And no. Go and tell the disciples, including Peter, that Jesus is going ahead of you in Galilee. And you will see them there just as He told you before He died. Kung babasahin po natin sa Matthew 28, yung pong uh, account doon ay uh, kinausap din ng angel yung mga babae. Sinabi din po sa verse 5, Do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified, but He is not here. He is risen just as He said. So, come and see the place. Come and see the place. Pag ayaw niyong maniwala, tingnan niyo. Pag ayaw niyong maniwala, hali kayo, tingnan niyo. Amen? So the Lord is saying the same thing to you. Kung ayaw mong maniwala, hali ka, tingnan mo. Itong ebidensya na buhay ako mula sa mga patay. Kaya kitang pagalingin. Kaya kitang buhayin. Hindi ka magugutom, hindi ka mamamatay, hindi ka maghihirap. Kung ang buhay ko'y ginawa ko, ang buhay ko'y binigay ko para sa'yo, at ako'y namatay para sa'yo, at ako'y nabuhay mula sa mga patay para sa'yo, paano kung hindi magagawang gawan ng paraan ng mga problema mo? Amen? The Lord is talking to you. The Lord is saying that the resurrection is the proof that He can do anything and everything for you because He was able to do the most impossible and that is rising from the dead. And so, the angel said, go, go and tell the disciples, go. Amen. They were given, they were given the task to go and tell everyone, to testify to everyone that Jesus is risen. And in the same manner, we are given the task, we are given the calling to tell everyone that our Lord Jesus Christ is alive. That our Lord Jesus Christ resurrected from the dead. And that He is most powerful. He is most awesome. He is most marvelous. Because nobody has ever done that in our history. Amen? 
Nobody has ever done that. Nobody will ever do it. And nobody, never, never can anyone do it or duplicate it. Wala na pong makakagawa nito sa ating kasaysayan. Kaya po ang sabi sa kanya ay, sa kanila ay, pumunta kayo at sabihin nyo sa mga alagad. Because by then, the disciples are still scattered and they are confused. They have no direction. And what now? What now? Our Lord is dead. And this is the answer to those questions. Go and tell the disciples He has risen from the dead. Let us tell people that Jesus Christ rose from the dead. And by the fact that He rose from the dead, He can help us. Amen? Kaya niya tayong tulungan sa ating mga pinagdaraanan. Sapagkat kung nabuhay nga siya mula sa mga patay, bakit hindi ka niya kayang pagalingin sa iyong sakit karamdaman? Bakit hindi kaya kayang tulungan sa iyong pinagdaraanan? Mabigat man ito, masakit man ito, nakukuha niyo po ba ako? Ang pagbangon ni Jesus mula sa mga patay ay patotoo na kaya niyang gawin anumang bagay sa ating mga buhay. Ito man ay mahirap, ito man ay imposible, ito man ay mahirap paniwalaang mangyari, pwedeng mangyari sapagkat si Jesus ay nabuhay mula sa mga patay. Sa verse 8, So the women, they hurried away from the tomb. They were afraid, yet they were filled with joy. Amen? Halo-halo na po yung kanilang emosyon. Amen? Noong Sabado, sobra silang lungkot. Halo sa sila'y pagsakluban ng langit at lupa sa sobrang kalungkutan sapagkat patay na ang Panginoon. Pero dito po, na-encounter nila ang angel. Nakita nila ang empty tomb. And they were given the task to go and tell. Go and testify. The women hurried away. Sila po ay tumalima. Sila ay sumunod. They obeyed what was given to them as a command. And while they were walking, their pain, their sorrow were, were exchanged with joy. Their apprehensions, their fear. Sila po ay natakot, pero ngayon, napapalitan na ito ng kagalakan. It was filled now with joy. Amen? It, likewise, in our lives, sometimes we go through pain and suffering and sorrow and grief because of the things that we go through in life. But the Lord can change that. And instead of fear, instead of sorrow, He can fill our hearts with joy just like these women because they're the women they were rewarded for their loyalty they were rewarded for their faithfulness they were rewarded for their love for Jesus and now it is their time to be rewarded now they are filled with joy and in that joy they ran to the disciples and told them Jesus is alive he is risen but before that Sa Matthew 28, 9, sabi po doon, suddenly, Jesus met them. Hallelujah. Sa ka nakakita? Naglalakad sila, tumatakbo sila, biglang, gulaga. Dumating si Jesus sa harapan nila. Imagine, ano pong mararamdaman niya? Yung isang alam mong patay na, yung alam mong nailibing na, nakita mo, ikaw pa nga ang naglagay ng mga spices, ikaw pa nga ang nagbuhos ng perfume, ikaw pa nga ang nagbalot ng linen, ikaw pa nga ang nag-alaga nung ito'y inilibing, tapos suddenly, biglang dumating at uh, pumunta sa harapan mo, at ang sabi niya, greetings, he said, amen? Wow! What a powerful exena. What a powerful scene. Because these women are so blessed. They were the first witnesses to the resurrection. They were the first witnesses to the risen Christ. Hallelujah. What a special moment for these women. Their loyalty. Yung po kanilang katapatan na hindi nawala ng kabuluhan. Hindi po nila iniwan si Jesus. Pero sila po ay reward ng Lord. If you are faithful to God, if you are loyal to God, if you love God, hindi po niya lilimutin yun. He will not forget what you done. Well, you have done for Him. The Lord will not forget what you do for Him. And the Lord has not forgotten what these women did for Him. And so they were the first chosen 
people to see him in his resurrected body. They were the first people to meet him. Suddenly, Jesus met them and said, Greetings, he said. They came to him in shock and they clasped his feet. Sila po yung pa. They clasped his feet. Kanila po uh, hinawakan yung uh, mga paa ng Panginoon. And they worshipped him. This was their first initial reaction. When they saw the Lord Jesus resurrected, they bowed down. Sila po yung pa. They humbled themselves. And they worshipped him. They worship Him. Ito po ang dapat natin gawin sa Panginoon. Sambahin po natin siya, purihin natin siya, pasalamatan natin siya. Sapagkat pinatunayan niya ang lahat ng sinabi niya. Totoo siya sa lahat ng pangako niya. Hindi ito nagkabula. Kaya po sa halip na tayo ay magduda, sa halip na tayo po ay magreklamo, sa halip na tayo po ay magdalawang isip, Maglilingkod ba ako o hindi? Urong-sulong po tayo sa ating mga ginagawa para sa Panginoon. Sa halip po na pagdududa, pagdadalawang isip, pag-aagam-agam, sa halip po na double-mindedness, whether am I serving the Lord now, or will I serve the Lord, or will I not? Huwag po ganun. Kagaya ng mga babaeng ito, magpatuloy po tayo. Tuloy-tuloy po tayo. Huwag po nating iiwanan ang ating calling. Huwag po nating iiwanan ang ating pananampalataya. Huwag po nating iiwanan ang ating pagkakristyano. Huwag po nating iiwanan ang ating Panginoong Yeso Kristo. Sapagkat isang araw, tatanggap po tayo ng ating gantimpala. Kagaya ng mga babaeng ito, sila po unang nakakita sa Panginoon pagbangon niya mula sa mga patay. At ang Panginoon po ay minit sila. At ano pong ginawa ng mga babaeng ito, sila po ay nagpatira pa at sumamba. They clasp Jesus' feet and they worship. They worship. In the same manner that we should worship the Lord, whatever we are going through in our lives. And then, verse 10, Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go tell my brothers. Go to Galilee because there they will see me. Amen. And it is the same prophetic message that the Lord is giving you now. Do not be afraid. Ikaw ay nagkakaroon ng agam-agam. Pag nag-full time ako, magugutom ang pamilya ko. Hindi makakapag-aral ang mga anak ko. Ano na lang ang mangyayari sa buhay ko? Ano na lang mangyayari sa pamilya ko? Pero itong sabi ng Panginoon, huwag kang matakot. Do not be afraid. You will see me. Sabi po niya sa mga babae, there they will see me. Go and tell the disciples. And it is the same message. It is the same prophetic word that God is giving you right now. Whatever you are deciding on, whatever you are planning to do in your life, ito ang backup ng Panginoon. Huwag kang matakot. Do not be afraid. This is the prophetic word of the Lord. Do not be afraid. There are so many things that we are afraid right now. We are afraid of COVID. We are afraid to go out. We are afraid that we will lose our businesses. We are afraid that we will lose our jobs. We are afraid that we will never be go back to the normal because the world is so much in chaos and turmoil. We are living the most dangerous and perilous times. But the Lord is giving you the assurance, a prophetic message. The word is do not be afraid. For the Lord is your light and your salvation. Whom shall I be afraid? Wala po tayong dapat ikatakot sapagkat ang Panginoon po, He conquered death. And if He conquered death, how can He not conquer your miseries? How can, not, can He not conquer your joblessness? How can He not conquer your worries and anxieties and problems? The Lord is once again telling you, do not be afraid. It is the same message that the Lord gave the women when they saw the tomb that was empty. It was the same message that He gave His disciples. Do not be afraid. Nung nagpakita po ang Panginoon sa mga disciples doon sa upper room, 
sila po ay uh, naghihintay doon sapagkat ang mga babae ito ay nagpatutuo. Buhay ang Panginoon. Amen? Makikita po natin ito sa Book of John. Sabi po ng Panginoon, buhay, uh, sabi po ng mga babae, buhay ang Panginoon. Amen? Sa John 20, this is recorded. John 20, 19 to 23, Jesus appears to His disciples. On the evening of the first day of the week, when the disciples were together, the doors were locked for fear of the Jewish leaders. Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and the disciples were overjoyed because they saw the Lord. And again, Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with, the, when, and with that, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, their sins are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. Hallelujah. It is the same message. Peace be with you. Na ibig sabihin, huwag kang matakot. Pumaya pa ka. Umalma ka. Huwag kang natataranta. Do not live in a miserable life of panic and anxiety. Lahat inaalala mo. Lahat problema mo. Kaya konting tibot, akala mo pinagtasakluban ka ng mundo. Hindi naman problema, ginagawa mong problema. Hindi naman na uh, alalahanin, pero ginagawa mong alalahanin. And that's why you are living in a life of misery and you are missing a lot about the peace and love and joy of God. Sapagkat nabubuhay ka sa panic and anxiety and worry. You worry about everything. You worry about your garden. You worry about your plants. You worry about your uh, your house. You worry about everything. Amen? Inaalala mo lahat, ay, mali ang uh, posisyon nito. Dapat, medyo dito sa kanan, ay eh, nasa kaliwa eh. Pati yung mga yun, pinag-aalala ka mo. That's why you are not living a peaceful life. That's why you are not living a joyful life. That is, not, that is why you are not living a victorious life. Nakakaawa ka. You are the most pitiful person in the world because the peace of God is not with you. On this time, yung pong mga alagad, nilock nila yung doors, sabing ganun. The doors were locked because they fear the Jewish leaders. Maybe the Jewish leaders will come and arrest them because, oh, and accuse them falsely just like what they did with the Lord. O, oh, ninakaw nyo yung uh, bangkay ng inyong uh, rabay, ng inyong master. Lahat kayo kulong. And so, they locked the door. They locked the door, pero nakapasok si Jesus. Hallelujah. Nakalock yung door, pero pumasok si Jesus. Sabi niya, peace be with you. Saan dumaan to? Hello? Ganon ka makapangyarihan ng Diyos mo. Ganon ka makapangyarihan ng Jesus mo. Kahit mga saradong pinto, pinapasok niya. Amen? He can go through it. Ano yun? Nag-teleport ang Panginoon? Bago pa may teleportation ng Dragon Ball, meron ng teleport doon sa John 2019. Si Jesus pumasok po at napunta doon sa kabila kahit hindi niya binuksan yung pinto. Because the doors were locked. It was locked by the disciples. Because they were scared that they will be arrested by the chief priests and the Jewish leaders. Because they are trying to make it appear that the disciples stole the body of Jesus. But just the same, Jesus came and went through the locked door and give them the assurance, peace be with you. And then he showed them his hands. Pagpapatunay na ako ito, hindi ako multo. Magkaminsan po ang tingin natin sa Panginoon ay isang multo. Isang multo na hindi natin nakikita, isang multo na kinakatakutan natin. Na, dati meron akong uh, picture ng the eye. Natatakot ako doon kasi kahit saan ako magpunta, sinusundan ako ng mata niya. Akala ko yun ang Jesus. Pero hindi pala siya ang Jesus. Sapagkat ang totoong Jesus po ay itong ating pinag-aaralan. Jesus who can go through the locked doors. Amen? That means Jesus who can do the impossible. Jesus who can do the unbelievable. Jesus who can do the most amazing thing. Amen? And so these uh, disciples were so much in worry. 
sila po ay sobra po ang kanilang pag-aalala. Sobra po ang kanilang takot. They were expecting that the Jewish leaders will come and arrest them. Pero hindi naman mangyayari yun. Sapagkat si Jesus po ay dumating at ang sabi niya, pumaya pa kayo. Peace be with you. And do you want a prophetic word? Do you want a prophetic message? Eto, peace be with you. Pumaya pa ka, anak. Pumaya pa ka, kapatid. Pumaya pa ka, tatay. Huwag kang mabuhay sa panic. Huwag kang mabuhay sa anxiety and worry. Bahala ang Diyos sa'yo. Kung kaya nga niyang tagusin ang mga saradong pinto, ang mga nakalak na pinto ay kaya niyang tagusin, ganun din sa buhay mo. Kaya niyang tagusin ang lahat. Amen? At sinasabi niya, pumaya pa ka. Peace be with you. Now, you do not believe? You think I am a ghost? Look at the nails. The holes are here. I am Jesus. So, peace be with you. Because there was a disciple named Thomas who doubted. Thomas doubted, I will not believe. You know, sabi niya sa mga uh, babae, sina, sina Mary Magdalene at yung mga the other Mary, sabi niya, what are you saying? I have seen Jesus, he died on the cross. And he was laid on the tomb by Nicodemus. And Joseph of Arimathea, what are you saying? He is alive. But Mary Magdalene were saying, Yes, we have seen him. He said greetings and we clasp his feet and we worship him. Yes. But Thomas could not believe. Thomas did not believe. And so Jesus came in and showed himself and showed the nails. Amen? Yung pong butas ng mga pako sa kanyang mga kamay. Magkaminsan po, para tayong si Thomas, without We do not believe. We have many uh, we have many apprehensions and skepticisms. And so it needed a Jesus himself to show the holes in his hands. This is where the nails went through, Thomas. This is where the nails went through, Thomas. And so when Thomas saw the nail, the, the hole in Jesus' hands, He said, my Lord and my God. Amen. He confessed, my Lord and my God. At ganun din po sa buhay natin. If there are some things in our lives that we have find it difficult to believe, hindi mo mapaniwala ang kaya kang pagalingin ng Panginoon. Kompleto. Absolute healing. Total absolute healing in your life. If you cannot believe that, Then you go back to the resurrection. You go back to the accounts of the resurrection when the Lord proved in so many ways and in so many times that He can do the impossible. And in the same manner, He can do the impossible in your life. He can heal you from your sins because it is said when He's hung on the cross, Isaiah 53 verse 5, By His wounds, we are healed. Sa mga sugat niya, sa mga latay niya, tayo ay magaling na. Is there an in-between there? Is there an uncertainty there? Meron ba doon, maybe you will be healed. Someday you will be healed. Sometimes you will be healed. But it is very empathic and explicit. By the wounds of Jesus, we are healed. So there is no cancer, there is no sickness, there is no disease, there is no COVID that is more powerful than the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. There is no difficulty, there is no problem, there is no burden, there is no struggle, there is no chaos and turmoil that is greater than the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I want you to grasp that. I want you to comprehend that. Because this is the key to your victorious Christian life. Ito ang tagumpay na nais ang Panginoon na maranasan natin. Na nakaangkla, nakaangkor sa pagbubuhay, pagkabuhay na maguli ng ating Panginoon. 
everything that God has promised, everything that God has done is anchored on the resurrection. Because if Jesus did not resurrect, if Jesus did not rise from the dead, if God has not allowed His Son to rise from the dead, then everything is a lie. God is a liar. Jesus is a liar. He is not trustworthy. He does not fulfill what He says. The Old Testament is a farce. Your faith is a farce. The Bible is nothing but, you know, a trash book. But no, the resurrection of Christ proved everything that God is. Proved everything that Jesus is. Ang kanya pong pagkabuhay na muli mula sa mga patay. And so again, Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. Amen? So two prophetic messages that God wants us to receive today and accept and embrace today. Number one, do not be afraid. Because there are many things that will cause you to be afraid. That will cause you to fear. The things around you. And COVID-19 is instilling fear in the hearts of people. Why? Rightly so. Because it kills. People are dying. People are being killed by this, you know, mysterious disease. But the Lord is saying, put your trust in Him. Put your trust in the Lord and do not be afraid. For the Lord is the light and your salvation. You shall not fear. The Lord is the stronghold of your life. You shall not be afraid. Do not be afraid. And second message, prophetic message, that the peace of God be with you. That in these times of chaos and turmoil, the world is being turned upside down. There's uproar among the nations. There's a lot of wickedness and killings and hatred. But the Lord is telling, peace be with you. Just as he was saying to his disciples, just as he was saying to the women at the tomb, Peace be with you. Do not be afraid. And I pray that we will embrace that. Tayo po ay uh, ma, 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 uunawaan po natin ang mga bagay na ito sapagkat ito po ang magdadala sa atin sa para masustain at magtagumpay sa mga problema ang kinakaharap natin. And I tell you, beloved, as I said, I've always been saying this, the bad news is This world is not going to get better. Hindi po iigi ang sitwasyon ng mundo. Bagkos ang sabi po ng Mateo 24, lalo pa po itong lalala sapagkat ang lahat ng ito ay simula pa lamang. It is just the beginning of birth pangs. And so if you are expecting the world to get better, no, it won't. And so it is up to you where you will anchor your faith where you will put your life on and trust on. Amen? Kaya ngayon po tinatawagan tayo ng Panginoon na tayo po'y magtiwala lamang sa Kanya. Sapagkat ina-expect mo matatapos na ang, uh, ang, uh, ang ECQ, ina-expect mo matatapos ang, uh, ang mga quarantine at ang mga lockdown, eh, hindi nga ho, eh, lalo pa ho nilang in-extend, lalo, lalo pa ho nilang pinapalawi, at lalo, lalo pa pong na oppress at nare-repress po ang ating mga buhay. We are not so free now. We are not so free to go out. We are not so free to do whatever we want. And in these times, you know, you know, mental anxiety, mental torture, depression, mental struggles are so rampant. Ito po yung uh, nararanasan ng mga tao ngayon. Kaya kung wala ka sa pag-ibig ng Panginoon at sa kapayapaan ng Panginoon, You will lose your mind. You will go crazy because this world is going crazy. And so the Lord is saying unto you, Peace be with you. Just like He said to His disciples, Let the peace of God be with you. And it is the peace that surpasses all understanding. It is the peace that will give you the calm demeanor amidst the storm, amidst the chaos, amidst the turmoil, amidst the uproar of the world and the nations of the world. Kaya kahit na po anong mangyari, kumalman, kumalman lang po tayo sa presensya ng Panginoon. 
Let us just rest in the peace of God. Let us just rest in the presence of God. Amen? Amen. So, makikita po natin ang mga, ang mga katotohanan dito na pinapatunayan ng pagkabuhay na muli ng Panginoon, yung the empty tomb was a proof of the single greatest act in our history that Jesus rose from the dead. He is alive. Because Mark 16, 7 says, Do not be afraid. Are you looking for Jesus of Nazareth who was crucified? He is not here. He is risen from the dead. The resurrection of the Lord is one that is recorded, accounted for, validated through history. Hindi po ito isang legend. Hindi po ito isang alamat o kwento-kwento lamang. Ito po ay nangyari at naganap. That's why sa Acts uh, or sa Corinthians po, sa 1 Corinthians 15, 3 to 8, sabi po ni Paul, for, for what I have received, I passed on to you as of first importance, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day according to the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, and then he appeared to the twelve, and after that, he appeared to more than 500 of the brothers and sisters at the same time in the book of Acts. And the most at, and most of whom are still living, though have, some have fallen asleep. Then he appeared to James and to all the apostles. And the last of all, he appeared to me as to one abnormally born. See? Paul po ang nagpapatutuo rito. Si Paul po ang nagsasabi. The great, one single greatest act in history, that is the resurrection of Jesus Christ, have been validated, have been witnessed by credible people. He appeared to Kepas. He appeared to the 12 disciples in the upper room. He appeared to more than 500. So hindi po ito isang alamat sapagkat ito po ay valid. Amen? Historical account. Valid historical fact recorded. And, sabi po doon, after appearing to 500, hindi lamang pong isa, dalawa, tatlo, kapag ikaw ay pumunta sa korte, magkaroon ka ng isa, dalawa, o tatlong credible witness, malakas ang kaso mo. Pero ito po, hindi lamang po isa, dalawa, tatlo, o labing dalawa, kundi limang daan po ang nakakita sa Panginoon. Sa Book of Acts, 500 were able to witness the risen Christ. And then, he appeared to James, according to Paul, and to all the apostles in the book of Acts, and to me, Paul, the apostle. Paul, the Pharisee once, but now a follower of Christ. So, there were so many people who can testify that Jesus rose from the dead, and that it is not a legend, it is not an alamat. It is not a comical cuento. Amen? Hindi po ito isang fiction, but it is a fact that Jesus rose from the dead. And it was recorded in the Gospels, the Synoptic Gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke. So, if I may go back, what again is the importance of the resurrection? As I said, kung hindi po nabuhay si Jesus sa mga patay, we are doing the wrong things. So, sabi po ni 1 Corinthians 15, 12 to 9, ito yung sabi ni Pablo. But, if it is preached that Christ has been raised from the dead, how can some of, how can some of you say that there is no resurrection of the dead? Because even then, during the time of P Pablo or Paul, people were already questioning the validity of the resurrection of Christ. There were already oppositions. They were already enemies of the resurrection. That's why Paul countered this by saying, How can some of you say that there is no resurrection of the dead? If there is no resurrection of the dead, then not even Christ has been raised. 
And if Christ has not been raised, our preaching is useless. That is number one. Number one reason why the resurrection is very important. Because it is the basis of our preaching. What I'm saying to you now is useless and nothing if there is no resurrection of the dead. At nagsasayan lang po ako ng laway ko, ng oras ko, at buhay ko sa pag-aalay ng paglilingkod sa Panginoon kung hindi po nabuhay ang aking Panginoon mula sa mga patay. My preaching is useless if there is no resurrection. And so is your faith, Pete Paul was saying. So if there is no resurrection of the dead, which is the basis of our message and our faith, then ka- kawawa naman po tayo. More than that, sabi po ni Pablo, we are then found to be false witnesses about God. Okay? Aside from our preaching is useless, our faith is useless, we are false witnesses for God. Imagine, tayo po ay mga bulaang mga propeta. Tayo po ay mga bulaang mga, mga ngaral. Pagkaganon. We are false witnesses about God. For we have testified about God that He raised Christ from the dead. But He did not raise Him if in fact the dead are not raised. For if the dead are not raised, then Christ has not been raised either. And if Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile. Amen? Ang atin daw pong pananampalataya ay walang kabuluhan kapag hindi po siya nabuhay mula sa mga patay. And number four, you are still in your sins. Amen? If Christ did not raise, rise from the dead, we are still in our sins. Tayo pa'y patuloy na bubuhay sa ating kasalanan, sa ating kalikuan, sa ating iniquities, transgressions, and disobedience to God. We will still be living in our sins, our sins of immorality, our sins of drug addiction, our sins of uh, disobedience and rebellion to God. These are the consequences if Christ is not risen from the dead. We are still in our sin. But praise God! Because God rose from the dead, Jesus Christ rose from the dead, we are set free from our sins. He conquered death so God can conquer the sin in our lives. Amen? If we surrender it to Him. Lord, I surrender to You my lust, my immorality. I surrender to You my drug addiction. I surrender to You my alcoholism, my addiction to nicotine. I surrender to You my adultery, my concubinage. I surrender to You my lying, my deception, my, my stealing. Ang aking pagnanakaw kasi nung alingan, pandaraya ay sinusuko ko sa'yo. At kapag ang Panginoon, napagtagumpaya niya ang kamatayan, gayon din naman ang mga kasalanan sa buhay natin ay napagtagumpayan na natin. Amen? Sapagkat inilagak natin ang ating pagtitiwala sa ating Panginoong Heso Kristo na namatay sa krus at pagkatapos ng ikatlong araw ay nabuhay mula sa mga patay. Your faith is futile, you're, you're still in your sins, but praise God, hindi po gano'n ang, ang, ang nangyari. Then, also, who have those who have fallen asleep in Christ are lost. Amen? We're talking here about eternity, eternal life, yung mga namatay na nauna sa atin. Kung hindi na buhay si Jesus mula sa mga patay, pananatili silang patay. Walang promise of eternity. Walang promise of eternal life. Wala pong promise na sila aakit ng langit pagdating ng panahon, when the rapture comes. So, it is very important that the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ is something that we lived up to every day of our lives because this is the anchor of our faith. Amen? And lastly, Paul said, if only for this life we have hope in Christ, we are of all people most to be pitied. Tayo raw po yung mga pinakakawawang tao. Tayo raw po yung mga pinakakawawang mga mananampalataya. Tayo raw po ang mga pinakakawawang tagasunod ni Kristo. Kung hindi siya nabuhay sa mga patay. Kung hindi. Pero nabuhay nga siya. Kaya hindi totoong walang kabuluhan ang ating pangangaral. That our preaching is useless. Hindi totoong our faith is useless. Hindi totoong we are false witnesses of God. Hindi totoong we are, our faith is futile. Hindi totoong we are still in our sin because we have already been redeemed and set free from our sins. At hindi po totoong 
There is no hope for the dead. There is no hope for those who have fallen asleep because there is hope for eternity and eternal life for them. The Bible says, He who has the Son has eternal life, but he who does not have the Son you know, has no eternal life. So kung meron kang Panginoong Yesu Kristo sa puso mo, ikaw ay may assurance of eternal life, may buhay na walang hanggan. And praise God. At hindi po totoo, tayo ang pinakakawawang tao sa buong mundo. We are not the most pitiful of all, but we are the most blessed of all. We are the most victorious of all. We are the most, you know, we have been granted by the great grace of God sa ating mga buhay. Amen? So, hindi po totoo. Praise God! Sapagkat ang Panginoon po ay dinebank po niya lahat ng mga paniniwala nito. So, without the victory of Easter Sunday, without the resurrection of the Lord, our Christianity is a farce, is a fake, is a lie. But thank be unto God because Jesus Christ rose from the dead and so Christianity is alive. Christianity is the truth. Amen? The Christianity that was founded not by any man, not by any person, but by the Lord Jesus Christ Himself is the most powerful thing that can happen to a person. Amen? Ang, ang basihan po ng ating uh, pananampalataya at uh, buhay na walang hanggan ay ang um, Resurrection ng Panginoon. Sa 1 Corinthians 15, to 53 And just as we have been born the image of the earthly man, so shall we bear the image of the heavenly man. I declare to you, brothers and sisters, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable. Listen, I tell you a mystery. We will not sleep. But we will all be changed in a flash, in a twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound, the dead will be raised imperishable, and we will be changed. For the perishable must clothe itself with the imperishable, and the mortal with immortality. What does this mean, brethren? That our eternity is full of hope. It is our blessed hope. Amen? Our life is is full of hope sapagkat meron po tayong pinangahawakang pag-asa. Sabi po doon sa ating binasa, we will not all sleep but we will be changed. Tayo raw po na mga buhay pa na darat na ng rapture, hindi na po tayo mamamatay bagkus ang ating pong mga katawan ay mapapalitan from the perishable to the imperishable. From mortal to the immortal. Itong katawang ito na nabubulok Tinatamaan ng sakit, tinatamaan ng karamdaman, ng hihina, namamatay pagdating ng panahon dahil sa katandaan, sapagkat nagde-degenerate ang mga cells, ang mga organs, ang mga systems, because this is weak and frail. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 15, 49-53, when the rapture comes, this body will become immortal. This will be changed from the perishable to the imperishable. This is my blessed hope. That's why I do not give up. That's why I continue to put my hope in the Lord because I know that there is eternity waiting for me. There is eternal life at hindi ko sasayangin ang buhay ko. Hindi ako mabubuhay sa kasalanan sapagkat gusto kong makasama sa rapture. Ayoko mabuhay sa pag-disobey sa kalooban ng Panginoon sa buhay ko sapagkat I want to experience that in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, I will be changed, and the Lord will take me home. This is my blessed hope. At yung mga nauna nang namatay, na dumat dinatnan ng rapture, sila po ay babangon mula sa mga patay, mula sa kanilang mga nitso, mula sa kung saan sila ay nakalibing, sila po ay bibigyan ng buhay, sila po ay bibigyan ng katawang panlangit, at kasama po natin sila para ma-rapture ng ating Panginoon. 1 Corinthians 15:49 to 53 Kung hindi po nabuhay si Jesus mula sa mga patay, siya ang unang nag-resurrect from the dead. Siya ang unang nabuhay mula sa mga patay. Kung hindi po niya ginawa iyon, ang pananampalatayang ito ay isang huwad. This is a fake fake. This 
rapture, this second coming, this perishable to imperishable, this twinkling of an eye thing, it is nothing. But praise God because the resurrection happened and so we can hope for our own resurrection. We can hope for the resurrection of those who have been, you know, ahead of us, na mga namatay ng mahal natin sa buhay. And if you want to be reunited with them, gusto mong makapili ng mga mahal mo sa buhay na nauna nang namatay, darating ang panahon ta kayo ay magre-reunion sa langit. Tiyakin mong magagalap at mangyayari yun. Mangyayari lang yun kung meron kang Panginoon sa puso mo. Tatanggapin mo si Jesus sa iyong buhay at isusuko mo ang kasalanan mo. At tatanggapin mo at ibibigay mong pananampalataya mo sa Kanya na namatay sa krus ng Kalbaryo para sa iyo at para sa akin. Para bayaran ang lahat ng kasalanan. Gaano man ito kalaki, gaano man ito kasama, kaya tayong patawarin ng Panginoon. Kung tayo lamang iihingi ng tawad at magpapakumbaba. Kapatid, huwag mong sayangin ang buhay mo. Huwag mong sayangin ang pananampalataya mo. Tama ang pananampalataya mo. Tama si Jesus na pinagbigyan mo ng buhay. Huwag mo itong sayangin sapagkat isang araw mararanasan mo ang, 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 katag, ang, kat, ang the, the, consummation, the consummation of your faith. And that is eternity, eternal life. What is eternity? Eternity is you know, unfathomable. It, it, is, it is not about numbers. You cannot even comprehend how long eternity is because there is no equivalent numbers to it. Amen? Kasi kaya pag sinabi mong eternity, magpasa walang hanggan. Kapatid, saan mo gugugulin ang iyong eternity, which is forever? Saan mo ito gugugulin? Dalawa lang ang paggugugulan ng tao ng kanilang eternity. Pag mayroon kang Panginoon at Kristo sa puso mo, tinalikuran mo ang kasalanan at nagbigay ka at nag-alay ng buhay sa Panginoon, ang sabi ng Bible, mayroon kang buhay na walang hanggan. John 3.16 For God so loved the world that whoever believes in Him should not perish in hell but have eternal life. So you go to heaven. But if you continue to dwell in your sin, commit immoral acts, commit lying and deception. If you continue to dwell in your sins, the Bible says the penalty of death, the judgment of death, the, the judgment of sin, the wages of sin is death. Death for eternity in hell. So there are two choices, brethren. Mamili ka ngayon. Saan mo gustong gugulin ang iyong buhay na walang hanggan? Buhay na walang hanggan sa kalangitan kasama ang Panginoon at ang iyong mga mahal sa buhay na nauna na, o buhay na walang hanggan sa impyerno, kasama ang jablo at mga demonyo, at lahat ng mga wicked na taong hindi nagbigay ng buhay sa Diyos. Kapatid, naway huwag mahuli ang lahat. Yakapin mo ang iyong blessed and living hope, and that is the resurrection of Christ. Sa John 11.25, Jesus said to Mary and Martha, I am the resurrection and the life, The one who believes in me will live even though they die. Amen? Ito po ang pangako ng Panginoon. It's an absolute truth that He is the resurrection and the life. There is resurrection, brethren. And so you don't have to be afraid of death. You don't have to be scared of death. Because death comes to everyone. Amen? Yung iba nauuna lang. Yung iba nahuhuli. But death is inevitable. It is something that comes to everyone. And today... We, it dawns on us because of what is happening around right now. People are dying. In the last few days, in the last few you know, days, I, I, have been, I have been receiving news about death of some people that, that we know and acquainted with. And it, it dawns on you that, yes, Lord, life is really short. Na ang buhay na ito ay pahiram lang. At kung gusto mo nang kunin, wala po kaming magagawa. And the most important thing is that when death comes to us, we are ready. We are prepared. We know we are going. And the resurrection of Christ gives us that blessed and living hope. We can choose to spend our eternity in heaven with our Lord. Or we can choose to spend our eternity in hell with Satan and his demon cohorts. And lastly, what, what is the importance of the resurrection of Christ? It is the basis 
for the power that Jesus Christ is offering to all of us. Amen. Jesus Christ conquered death when he resurrected from the dead. He conquered death because he rose from the dead. And if he conquered death, as I said, how can, I, how can he not conquer your problems, your sicknesses, your diseases, your struggles, all the things that you're going through? Ano man ang pangangailangan mo? Ay kayang tugunin ng Panginoon. Because he said in Matthew 28:18, All authority in heaven and earth are mine. Because of his resurrection, he has proven that he is powerful and that all authority in heaven and in earth are his. Kaya kung ikaw ay merong Kristo sa puso, it is the same power and authority that he has can be given to us as his children, as his servants. The Bible in, in Revelation 17, 14 says, I will be king over all kings and the Lord over all lords. Amen? So, merong mga nag, nagpipretend dyan na sila ang mga king o sila yung mga lords o sila yung mga powers o sila yung mga authority and their arrogance is so great that they, they minimize God in their nations, they minimize God in their governments. This king, so, so to speak, or lord, so to speak, will come to nothing because there is only one King of Kings and Lord of Lords and that is the Lord Jesus Christ. And all of these so-called kings of the earth will be subject to Him. Revelation 17, 14. And Jesus said in Revelation 1, 18, I will be alive forevermore and I have the keys of death and Hades. Amen? Nasa kanya raw po ang susi ng kamatayan at ng Hades. At siya po ay buhay magpakailan pa man. Amen? This is what I've been talking about, about eternity, eternal life. Your life here in earth is temporal. It is very short. It is numbered. The, the short, the lifespan of a person will not even reach up to 100. Amen? So there is more to life here on earth. And that is eternity. That is the most important thing. Yun po ang paghandaan natin. Hindi po yung ating uh, mga buhay dito sa lupa. Sapagkat ang buhay po natin dito sa lupa ay napakaikli at maaaring mawala in the twinkling of an eye. And so, dapat po ang pinaghahandaan natin ay ang eternity. Ang buhay na walang hanggan. Sapagkat yun po ay walang hanggan. But the Lord says, I have the keys of death and Hades. I am alive forevermore. And so we should put our trust in our Lord Jesus Christ. Matthew 16, 18, And from my throne I will build my church on earth, and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Amen? Because of the resurrection of Christ, He has proven His power. He is a God who is all-powerful, omniscient, omnipotent, omnipresent. The power of God, the omnipotence of God is so great that He said, the gates of hell will not prevail against it. And so if the devil is playing with you, the devil is attacking you, the devil and his demon cohorts is trying to harm you, trying to deceive you, trying to do anything and everything to stray you away from your faith, know that Jesus Christ has conquered death and he has conquered the gates of hell. And that gates of hell will not prevail against the church, against you, against me. Amen? So in the end, si Satan nasa ilalim ng iyong mga paa. At ikaw ay nagtagumpay sapagkat nagtagumpay ang Panginoon laban sa kanya. Matthew 24, 30 And when the time is full, I will come again in power and great glory and I will gather my elect from one end of the heaven to the other. And the culmination of everything you know, when Jesus Christ resurrected from the dead, He rose to the heavens. He ascended to the heavens. Amen? Siya po ay umakyat po ng langit. Hindi na po siya muling namatay, umakyat na po siya ng langit. At pagkatapos nun, iniwanan niya po ang mga disciples at iniwanan niya po tayo. We are now in the grace of that dispensation. Tayo po ay nandun na sa dispensation na yun, ngayon. But I believe that we are also at the tail end of that dispensation, the history, the church history, the church or the Christian history. Sapagkat 
Ngayon po ang grace ay dumating sa mga Gentiles. Tayo po yung mga Gentiles. Tumanggap ng biyaya ng kaligtasan ng Panginoon. Pero dumating na rin po ang katapusan. Nasa, we are at the edge of the end of the times. So, the Bible says, the time will come when I will come again in power and great glory. And I will gather my elect. And we are the ones that will, the Lord will gather when He will come again in His great glory. Amen? Pinag-aralan po natin ito sa eschatology when I talked about uh, the second coming of Christ. And, and now you feel like you are defeated. You feel like you are being mistreated. Inaapi ka, sinisipa, sipa ka, pinagtatawanan ka. It's as if you are treated as a loser and a weakling. But I tell you, beloved, the Jesus Christ whom you have put your trust on and put your faith into is not weak. He is not a loser. He rose from the dead. He is victorious forevermore. And He will come again to prove that so that the arrogance of humanity will bow down and recognize that truly there is only one name that is above every name. And that is the name of Jesus. There is no sickness or disease that he has not overcome. He destroyed Satan and hell. There is no problem with your little struggles, with your little pain, with your little problems, with your difficulties, with your sickness and disease. Because he has overcome. Jesus Christ has overcome. And his power is explosive. His power is awesome. His power is amazing. And the Lord has said in John 15, 11, These things I have spoken to you, that my joy may be in you, and that your joy may be full. The Lord wants us to experience the consequences of the resurrection, the fact of the resurrection. And what is that? That we may be joy, that we might have the joy of God in our hearts and that joy may be full. What is the opposite of joy? Grief, anxiety, worry. Amen. That is the opposite of joy. Hindi yan ang will ng Lord sa buhay natin. Ang will ng Lord sa buhay natin is that we may have joy. That may joy may be in you and that your joy may be full. Sinabi ba ng Lord, kalahati lang ang joy? Konting joy lang, hindi. That our joy may be full. Hallelujah. And I pray that the joy of God will be full in our hearts. We will discover and live up to the resurrection of Christ. Ito po ang kalooban ng Panginoon sa atin. Maranasan natin ang kapuspusan ng kanyang kapangyarihan, ng kanyang kagalakan, ng kanyang kapayapaan ng kanyang pagpapala. I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory that is revealed to us. Romans 8.18 Consider daw na yung mga sufferings mo nito ay momentary at nothing compared to the glory that awaits us. 2 Corinthians 4.17 For this light and momentary affliction is preparing for us an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison. Hallelujah. This is our blessed hope. Yung mga mumunting bagay daw na nararanasan natin ngayon, mga problema at mga laban ng buhay natin nararanasan, ay inihahanda tayo sa isang mas malaki na merong eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison. Yung naghihintay sa iyo kapatid ay walang kapantay. It is unimaginable. It is incomprehensible. Incom it is unfathomable. And so the Lord is saying, this is just like momentary affliction. Look on and look beyond because the glory that awaits you is beyond all comparison. Amen? Wala po itong kaparis, wala itong katulad. Kaya huwag kang bumita. Sabihin mo sa sabihin mo sa sarili mo. Huwag kang bibitang. Huwag kang susuko. Huwag kang bibigay. Hawakan mo ang ginawa ng Panginoon doon sa krus ng Kalbaryo at ang kanyang pagkabuhay ng mga muli mula sa mga patay. Sapagkat ang lahat ng ito ay patutuo ng lahat ng nararanasan natin ay mapagtatagumpayan natin. 
Blessed are you when others revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you or falsely on my account and strip you and beat you with rods and put you in stocks. Rejoice and be glad for your reward is great in heaven in the joy of your risen master of the resurrection. Rejoice and be glad. Eh, may COVID, magre-rejoice and be glad. Eh, nawalan ako ng trabaho, magre-rejoice and be glad. Eh, nagsarado yung negosyo ko, nagsarado yung kumpanya ko, namatay yung mga mahal ko sa buhay. Ano ba yan? Bakit rejoice and be glad? Amen? Rejoice and be glad, hindi dahil namatayan ka. Rejoice and be glad dahil may pag-asa ng pagbabangon na muli mula sa mga patay. Rejoice and be glad dahil may pag-asa na isang araw makikita mo ang iyong mga mahal sa buhay. Dahil si Jesus ay bumangon mula sa mga patay. This is the power of the resurrection of Christ. This is the power of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. That we can overcome everything and anything in our lives because Jesus Christ rose from the dead. And if He has done that, we can do it. We can overcome our momentary afflictions, our momentary struggles and pains. This is the power of the resurrection. Hallelujah. Yung kung ang iyong mga mata, ang iyong mga ulo at ang iyong mga mata, ipikit at itaas ang dalawang kamay, patungo ng langit, at sabihin mo, Panginoon, patawarin mo ako sapagkat hindi ko po ito isinakabuhay. Ako po'y nabuhay sa kasalanan. Patawarin mo po ako sapagkat ako po ay hindi nagtiwala. Patawarin niyo po ako, Panginoon, sapagkat ako po ay nagduda. Ako po ay nanghina. Ako po ay tumalikod. Forgive me for I have doubted my faith. Forgive me for I have lived in sin. Forgive me for I have doubted your promises. At ngayon po, Panginoon, ako po ay humihingi ng tawad. Forgive me, Lord. Pura ba ka? Come on, surrender your life to Jesus. Surrender your life to Jesus. Give up. Surrender your sins. Surrender your disobedience. Surrender your doubts. Surrender your unbelief. Surrender your weaknesses. Surrender your shortcomings. And ask the Lord, forgive me, Lord. Matawad po, Panginoon. Sorry. Sabagat hindi po ako nabuhay ayon sa nais mo. Kundara ba siya ka? Yes, O Lord. Tama siya ka? Come on. Yes. Just talk to Jesus.
And the Lord is saying, there's nothing to be scared about. There's nothing to fear in this world. The world will crumble. The world will collapse. But those who put their trust in Jesus, those who put their trust in the Lord, will never be moved, will never be shaken. And so even right now, the Lord is once again telling you, my child, do not be afraid. I give you my peace. And it, the, it is a peace that surpasses all understanding. If I have rose from the dead, I can overcome in your life, saith the Lord. I can heal you. I can do miracles in your life. I can bless you. I can strengthen you. I can lift you up. I can promote you. I can give you what you need, saith the Lord. Because I have given my life for you. How can I not give what you desire? And so tell it to Jesus. Sabihin mo sa Panginoon kung ano ang kailangan mo. At siya itutugon. Ito ang sabi ng Panginoon. Ura ba ang karabasyan? Sabihin mo sa Panginoon ano ang kailangan mo sa Kanya. Kung ibinigay niya ang buhay niya para sa'yo, kaya niyang ibigay ang kagalingan mo. Kaya niyang ibigay ang himala mo. Kaya niyang ibigay ang kalayaan mo. Hingin mo sa Diyos. Sabihin mo, Panginoon, kailangan mong lumaya. Kailangan kong kumalik. Kailangan kong pumamba pagpala. Kailangan kong lumakas. Kailangan ko, Panginoon, ikaw sa buhay ko. Sabihin mo, Panginoon, kailangan kong lumakas ang aking mga puto. Panginoon, kailangan kong maging normal ang aking mga muscles, ang aking mga nerves. Pura ba ka? Panginoon, tinalingan ako ng tungtor. Ang sabi niya, tatlong buwan na lang ako. Pero hindi sapagkat ikaw ay nabuhay mula sa mga patay. Kaya mo akong pagalingin. Kaya mo akong gawa ng Himala. Tanggapin mo sa oras na ito sa pangalan ni Jesus. Ano man ang kailangan mo sa Diyos? Himala, pagalingan, pagpapala, kalayaan. Kung darabas siya ang Ikaw ay nawalan Nawalan ng mahal sa buhay Namatayan ka You have experienced the most painful thing in the world For losing a loved one But the Lord is saying Peace be unto you I give you my peace I give you my presence I give you my comfort I give you my joy Just receive in the name of Jesus. Walang imposible na hindi pwedeng gawin ang Panginoon sapagkat siya'y nabuhay mula sa mga patay. Ano man ang hinihingi natin, gaano man ito kahirap, kabigat, hindi ito imposible sapagkat nabuhay si Jesus mula sa mga patay. Ano may lang hinihingi mo sa Kanya ngayon? Tanggapin mo. Receive, receive. Do you need wisdom from God? Do you need help from God? Do you need financial blessings from God? Do you need the strength of God? Just receive it right now in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. And every abnormality in your blood, every abnormality in your nerve, every abnormality in your brain, every, every abnormality in your cell, in your tissue, in every atom of your body is being fixed by the Lord. Just receive the power of God. Just receive the healing of God. Just receive the miracle of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. Kung hindi man 
nabanggit ang iyong pangailangan, it doesn't matter because the Lord knows and you know. Just tell it to God. Because the Lord is willing and able to grant every prayer right now, every request right now. Because the Lord said, These things I have spoken to you that you may have joy and that that joy may be full. God wants you to have fullness of joy. Maranasan mo ang fullness ng himala ng pagbabangon ng uli mula sa mga patay ng Panginoon. The resurrection power of Christ is available for you right now. Just receive, receive whatever you need from God. Kandalamakan, abasikataka. Yes, ikaw na nasa ibang bansa, nakikinig ka ngayon. Ikaw na nawawala ng pag-asa, ikaw na nangihina, ikaw na may sakit, karamdaman, ikaw na nasa Canada, nasa Australia, nasa Amerika. Pinapagalingan ng Diyos. Tagapin mo, kagalingan ng Diyos. Sapagkat ang sabi ng Panginoon, gusto kong ibigay sa iyo ang fullness ng Himala at Kapangyarihan. Lamasya ka, Taka. Yes, O oh God, my healer, you sent your word and you healed my disease. From every nerve disorder, from every mental disorder, anxiety, worry, you are the Lord, my healer. The Lord has the power to heal you. And He is not limited by time and distance. Even right now, you are watching from this live stream and you are in the other parts of the world. Somebody is watching from Canada. The Lord is telling you, you are healed. Receive your healing. Somebody is watching from Australia. The Lord is telling you, you are healed. The Lord is watching from Kuwait. The Lord is telling you, you are healed. And somebody is watching from Singapore, from Japan, from America. Sino man ang inaamot, whoever is being rich by this message, the Lord is saying, you are healed. Receive. Receive your healing in the name of Jesus. You sent your word and healed our disease. Yes, O God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for the resurrection power of Christ. Thank you, Jesus, for the resurrection power of Jesus Christ. Every sickness and disease is healed. Every problem and pain and misery is being washed away in the name of Jesus. And only the presence of God, the comfort of God, the peace of God, the strength of God, the power of God, rest upon
We will continue to live in the light of the resurrection power of our Lord. To your name be the glory. To your name be the honors. To your name be the powers. Declare it and thank the Lord. Something good, something great, something miraculous has happened in our lives, in the lives of our loved ones, in the lives of the Filipino people, in this nation and in the nations of the world because the resurrection power of Christ is more powerful than anything and everything. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Sa inyo po ang lahat ng karangalan sa pangalan ni Jesus. Amen at amen.
praise God para po sa mga uh, magkakaloob ng inyong mga tithes and offerings at inyong mga pledges and love gift for the woman and man of God. Maaari nyo pong ipadala ang inyong mga uh, salapi, ang inyong pinansyal na kaloob sa mga uh, pamamaraan na amin pong inilalagay sa ating mga posts. At maaari nyo pong kontakin ang 0998-989-2963 para ipaalam ang lahat ng inyo pong mga ipagkakaloob sa iglesyang ito. At tunay nga na ang Panginoon ang siyang magbabalik sa inyong lahat ng inyong mga pagsasakripisyo pinansyal. Kung paanong ang Panginoon ay nagpapala sa atin sa ating pakikinig, sa mga salita niya, sa mga mensahe po niya, at napapagpala tayo na gagawan tayo ng Panginoon ng Himala at napapagaling tayo at pinagpapala tayo sa mga salitang iyon. Ganon din naman sa ating pong pagbibigay ng ating mga ikaputhandog ng buong tapat at buong kagalakan sa ating Panginoon, tayo po ay pagpapalain pa ng gusto ng ating Panginoong Diyos na buhay. Kaya ibigay po natin ang mga nararapat nating ibigay para sa Panginoon, para sa Iglesia ng Panginoon, at para po sa mga lingkod ng Diyos na ginagamit sa ating harapan. Kaya ang araw pong ito ay isang pinagpalang araw na naman ng ating Panginoong Diyos na buhay sa ating mga buhay. At muli sa mga susunod pang uh, Araw ay magtatakda pa rin ang Panginoon ng mga gawain na kagaya nito para tayo ay palakasin at para tayo ay patatagin sa ating pananampalataya at para tayo ay magtuloy-tuloy sa ating paglilingkod. Tayo pong lahat ay manalangin para sa ating pangwakas na panalangin. Dakilang Diyos, salamat pong muli Panginoon sa araw na ito sapagkat muli ang katagumpayan mo Panginoon ang siyang naming nakita at ang katagumpayang iyon ang siyang sumaamin Lord God. At tunay nga, Panginoon, na doon sa iyong pagkabayubay, Panginoon, sa krus ng Kalbaryo, ay winasak mo na ang lahat ng gawa ng kaaway sa aming mga buhay. Kaya kami matagumpay na at kami ay patuloy na magtatagumpay pa, Panginoon. Lalakad sa iyong harapan at maglilingkod, Panginoon, sa iyo, sapagkat ito ang nais mo, Lord God, sa huling panahon ng aming mga buhay dito sa mundong ibabaw. Kaya naman, Lord, Salamat po, Panginoon, sa muling pagpapaalala mo sa amin na ang kamatayan mo, Panginoon, ay nangyari at naganap noon para sa aming kaligtasan. At sa mga panahong ito, ito'y inaalala namin, Panginoon, para aming maalalang ikaw ang Diyos na nagligtas sa amin at ikaw din ang Diyos na magliligtas sa amin sa mga panahong ito. Kaya naman, Lord, salamat pong muli, Panginoon, sapagkat alam namin na Ikaw ang lagi namin kasama at walang anumang gawa ng kaaway ang magtatagumpay sa aming mga buhay. Salamat po, Lord, ng marami sa lingkod mong ginamit, Panginoon. Ibaba mo po sa Kanya ang matindi mong presensya, Panginoon, upang ipangaral niya pa na mas matindi pa ang iyong mga aral sa mga huling panahon. Dakilang Diyos, maitaas ka lamang po sa Kanyang buhay, Panginoon, at manatili kang inilalagay sa Kanya ang kapangyarihang iyon sa Kanyang pangangaral at pagtuturo sa bawat isa sa amin. Salamat po ng marami, Panginoon. I-bless mo po ang Kanyang sambahayan, Panginoon. I-bless mo po ang Kanyang mga mahal sa buhay, Lord God. Kung paanong kami, Panginoon, ay pinagpapala mo, Panginoon, ganun din ang Kanyang buhay, Panginoon. Higitan mo pa po ang pagpapala mo sa Kanya, Panginoon, at higitan mo pa po ang pagsama mo po sa Kanya. Salamat po, Diyos, ng marami at muli sa bawat nakikinig at nanonood sa araw na ito, Panginoon. Sa lahat ng nakiisa sa amin, Panginoon, sa pakikinig ng iyong mensahe, hayaan mo pong tuloy-tuloy nilang maranasan ang katagumpayan mo doon sa krus ng Kalbaryo. Salamat po sa kanilang mga buhay at anuman ang kanilang pangangailangan kanina, Panginoon, ito'y tinugunan mo na po, Lord. Ang kanilang sakit ay pinagaling mo na, Panginoon. Winasak mo na maging ang COVID, Lord God. Kaya naman, Panginoon, ang bawat isa sa amin ay gaganap sa aming mga tungkulin at maglilingkod kami ng buong puso sa iyong harapan. Salamat po, Lord, ng marami at muli naniniwala kami, Panginoon, na matatapos na ang kalagayan namin ito, Panginoon. Pinahanghahawa ka namin ang pangako mo na ikaw ang Diyos na tatapos ng lahat ng ito. No one can defeat us and even COVID can never defeat us. Talo na si Satanas, 
at patuloy siyang magiging talunan sapagkat ang katagumpayan mo ay nasa amin na. Salamat Panginoon sa iyong ginawa sa aming mga buhay sa araw na ito. At muli, nanam namin namin at pagninilay-nilayan pa namin Panginoon ang kabutihang ginawa mo sa aming mga buhay. We are looking forward for more of this, Lord God. At gagawin mo nga po ito, Panginoon, dahil ito'y ayon sa iyong kalooban. Salamat po, Diyos, ng marami at muli sa mga susunod pang gawain. Magkita-kita kami muli, Panginoon, at magkarinigan kami muli. Marinig namin ang pinakasariwang mensahe mo para sa buhay na wawag isa sa amin. Salamat po, Diyos, ng marami. Nasa amin ang iyong katagumpayan at ito ang amin siyang babaunin sa araw-araw ng aming mga buhay. Sa iyo po namin maingat na binabalik ang lahat ng kapurihan, ang lahat ng karangalan, pagsamba at papuri, at pasasalamat sa natatanging pangalan ng aming Panginoong Yesus. Amen. Amen.